Szanowni Państwo, ostatni rok. Ladies and gentlemen, last year, well, a lot happened. It's difficult to talk about everything, but I need to tell you uh, something about our last conference. So mid-October last year, what we were worried about that time, that was energy crisis. At that time, we noticed that gas storages are empty in Europe. The winter is coming. <coughs> And uh, this, uh, this was disturbing news for us, the energy issue. A couple of months passed by and it turned out that we need to very basic needs. And then we thought about hunger, physical shortage of food. This is the cover of The Economist from the end of May this year, when we were not sure. We knew about the war, but we were not sure whether the export of uh, food from Ukraine is at all possible. When we talk about uh, the last couple of months, we need to start with the attack of Russia on Ukraine. What happened is a military conflict of two very crucial uh, entities, crucial for the food market. They provide millions of people with everyday, uh, everyday products. The most important areas refer to wheat, corn, and sunflower oil. Uh, Russia in wheat is number one. Um, Ukraine is number one also in uh, sunflower oil. What is crucial also is that these two countries provided, as I mentioned, the basic products to their main importers. Wheat went to Egypt, the biggest importer of this product, or around 85%. Sunflower oil to India, another significant importer. And then Ukraine, Tur Turkey in wheat number three. Turkey is also a very good example um, on the fact that uh, problems can be uh, sequential. We cannot see immediately problems in one country. We can see the impact on other country. Uh, Turkey is the uh, biggest exporter of flour. It does not go to Luxembourg or United States, but it goes to Iraq, Syria, Yemen. So the problem with the war is even bigger problem with food for these countries. The war translated into the food prices around the world, the FAO index, you can see at the end, the increases are marked as for basic products from February to March, very rapid increase. What also uh, was brought by the war was that in these months following the attack, it turned out that the main factors affecting the prices, these are not these issues that we got used to talking about where we are in terms of the market, but political decisions. Have a look at this highest point, this pink in the middle, uh, 438. This is Matif uh, Stock Exchange and the prices of wheat. This happened when Antony Blinken, the Secretary of State of USA, said in public that we have to force or compel Ru Russia to open the food export corridor for the food from Ukraine. From that moment, the prices started to go down. And these peaks and uh, drops you can see further on, this is the result of uh, events that happened in military and political sector. And the final drop, this is the decision of Russia to go back to uh, the grain initiative uh, um, after they um, 
withdrew from that initiative and then went back. This um, corridor, food corridor, um, a lot of people disbelieved that uh, it would be at all possible to cooperate in any form, but it was possible to do that, to provide this solution. There are many opinions, but I believe it worked well. 11 million tons of different products uh, from agricultural sector were transported from Ukraine by sea, so it was the only a reasonable route to do that with such significant volume of products, mainly corn and wheat. And within last weeks, there was another decision that this initiative was prolonged. The products went to different countries, basically Spain, Turkey, China and Italy. Uh, perhaps you um, heard some comments of the main stakeholders that this uh, wheat and corn goes back to the places where it shouldn't go, even if it goes to Spain or Italy. It means that from other sources it can be transported to Africa or the Middle East. The food corridor decreased prices, but uh, nevertheless there is a new season, 22-23, we entered with significant prices, much higher than before. What you can see here, um, this is Matif and the prices of wheat. You can see that during this season with the food corridor, we have prices two-thirds higher than last season. In Poland, the development of prices was catching up with what we could see on the world markets. We are combined, so we react to this situation and we could observe that there is a transmission of prices in the value chain. I can show you here an interesting example of what it looked like on the poultry market and the broiler chicken. What you can see here is the dependence of profits and prices. This is the y-axis and the fodder prices. This is x-axis. Um, These are two factors that determine the profitability of this production and these gray and um, red line shows more or less balanced uh, profit from a typical hen house. So these gray dots, this, these are the previous years. So it was rather stable in one particular area as, as regards um, prices of fodder and the prices of stock. And then COVID 2020 and the turmoil on the market regarding referring to that. Then the next dots, these are uh, the transparent ones. On the right, on the left hand, you can see them going down uh, when we are touching almost zero as for profitability. And then another balancing point in 21. And then in 22, again it is shifted to another place. So you can see this transmission depending on these uh, prices, we can still observe it. As a result of war, we had to face another challenge, um, the immigration. Around 3 million people from Ukraine came to Poland within a couple of weeks, really, which uh, made Poland the second country around the world with the biggest number of immigrants after Turkey. And Poland is now a country with almost 40 million inhabitants, which translated into changes into our economy and everyday life. The migrants that came to Poland, these are also consumers. 
So the profile uh, regarding the food uh, in terms of Ukrainians and Poles is more or less similar. Uh, there are, of course, some differences, but what we can see, this is the percentage of the food mass that uh, is consumed by the Poles and Ukrainians within one year. So you can see it is more or less a diagonal line. So different products are consumed similarly in both cases, but the differences I mentioned, they refer to the fact that Ukrainians eat more tomatoes, more corn, more vegetables, they were eating less pork. So these are factors that affect our new situation. The inflow of new consumers generated also the reaction in retail trade. What you can see here, these are the changes in the volume of sale on the food market year to year. And here, what I would like to point your attention to, this is uh, 112, this is the volume of sale in retail, this was the increase in April 2020. You can see here the COVID recovery are much smaller here. So there are new consumers, there are new uh, people, so they are shaping our economic reality and how much food is sold in Poland. During the last year, as we all know, uh, there was a significant increase in prices. We see here a comparison in the food sector of the uh, prices uh, the producers' prices compared to consumers' prices. Producers in grey, consumers in green. This graphic shows the way these prices uh, were with, re with regards or in reference to 2005, which is the year after Poland's accession to the EU. We can see that the dynamics of increase on the side of the consumer was much higher than for the producers, and it was only in recent months that this has changed. So after the war started, producers' prices started going up faster than consumer prices. In April 2020, this dynamic of the producers' prices with regards of, in reference to our accession exceeded the increase of prices. Sorry, it's in 2022. Uh, the, the, price increase of the consumer. We, would, we could uh, look for different uh, causes, uh, but we need to look at the situation in retail. These are margins in retail, including food retail. What we see here is that during the times of crisis, namely between 2020 COVID and later 2022 the war, retail increased the margins, so there was some space, some room to absorb the price increase, the producer's price increase, and uh, make the price change flatter, the, the price that is seen by the consumers. Even though the price increase for the consumer was lower than for the producers, still we entered the price, consumer price levels that is highest in the 21st, we're talking about the dynamics, the price increase rate is highest in the 21st century. This is October, but uh, November was very similar. Even though those prices are very high in Poland, 
against the background of Europe, we were at the beginning of the middle of the range. In order to compare this, we would have to go back one more month to the time when Eurostat provided comparable data, so September. In September, as I said, we were more or less in the middle of the range, and the prices in Poland were growing slowest in the region, slowest among all the new EU states. What grew uh, fastest? Sugar, number one, vegetable oils, uh, flour, poultry. The slowest increase was for juices, tea, vegetables, fruits, counting from the bottom. Now, at the level, oh, by the way, interesting thing about sugar, it turned out, because if we compare the prices of various food categories and how they grew in other EU countries versus the growth in Poland, it turns out that the fastest growing category elsewhere were vegetable oils. And this is uh, what's marked with a dotted line on the left-hand side of the, of the slide. The fastest growing price-wise category in September 2022 uh, was sugar in Poland, of all categories in the whole of Europe. As we can see, there's a quite uh, a significant uh, increase compared to other countries. In the recent months, we are almost caught up uh, by Czechia, but still the price of sugar in Poland was higher than in the previous months. We were talking about price increase, so let's talk about how this uh, translated into the buying power of the consumers. We run a simulation. Consumption structure from 2019, where with a considerable degree of certainty, we can say it was a very good year when consumers could pick and choose when buying things. This is the percentage uh, breakdown of our expenditure in 2019 in Poland. We superimposed on this the price change in the various categories between December 19 and uh, September 22. And these analyses showed that in order to maintain the consumption structure from, the, from 2019, in a, some sort of way, we could assume that that was optimum, or at least what the consumers wanted. We would then have to spend 25.9% more in slots. When we compare this with the change in salaries, you can see on the left-hand side, nominal, these are the changes in nominal earnings, and on the right-hand side, the, the earnings as they increased in percentage. We are comparing these price increases to the average from the last quarter of 2019. Uh, and the first quarter from 2020. And in none of these categories that we used for the analysis did these increases uh, uh, catch up with the needs for increased expenditure. Remuneration in businesses are a little delayed when compared to the level of household expenditure or desired household expenditure. Pensions out outside of the farming sector are even more delayed, and the uh, remunerations of teachers, these are qualified teachers. Uh, so this is the, the highest earning class. This is uh, approximately 23% compared to the 26% of compared. So depending on the social group, the earnings increase with the, at a various degrees. We can't, of course, forget other employees. Uh, uh, who do not work for large businesses. A good approximation of the consumer attitudes could be the expanding plans for this year's Christmas. What we have here 
is a poll, consumer opinion poll, uh, from mid-October, run by Mintel, where they asked consumers how they expected uh, to, to spend during the coming Christmas in comparison to the previous Christmas, and relatively few people were planning to or would like to increase uh, their spending over the last Christmas. It, more or less the same is the largest group, but there is a very uh, large number of people who are uh, trying hard to spend less or not to buy anything. And there are differences between the categories. Perhaps for us in this room, a positive piece of news is that food and drinks are one category which is relatively resistant uh, to uh, those changes and largely unaffected by the reduction in consumer buying power in this case. Now, what were the trends in the recent months when we look at products? So what were the proposals from the food manufacturers towards the consumers? This is the uh, percentage of new products and what sort of marketing message followed those new products. What is immediately apparent is that the percentage of product that said organic went down from the peak in 2020 and joined a group of three leaders. And those leaders are no allergens, so absence of a, 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 an element or, or, or component that could be perceived as harmful. That's one category. And the second category is vegan, which for me is also quite interesting that the marketing message and the characteristics of the project uh, product vegetarian was relatively frequent, but very low, actually. So vegan has a significant advantage in terms of a marketing message over just, just vegetarian. In the middle of this group, we have a group of marketing um, messages that are related to ethics. It's probably good to talk about this, but in the context of other markets where Polish producers and exporters see this message as important. So let's have a look at the um, ethical issues in Poland against uh, some other countries. The darkest green uh, color is ethics. Bluish green. Let's see that in the UK, two thirds of the products introduced in the market, new launches, are packaged in the way that's environmentally friendly, that the, the packaging can be recycled. Packaging in France, also quite high up. In Poland, we also talk about this. The ethical issues found uh, their way to the top 10 trendiest categories, but much lower uh, than in West European markets. We are a major exporter, therefore our consumer uh, is not just Polish, but also European when you are a producer. So on the export market, that last year also provided uh, reasonably good results. What you can see here is the change of the export volumes, that's on the vertical axis, and the share of the value of the export on the horizontal axis. What the biggest change that we can observe here, which means that as the global prices of food went up, the total value of our exports went up, we also had significant healthy increase in the volume of exports. So the position of Polish exporters strengthened on the foreign markets. And we have some categories which 
lowered, uh, which were, were lowered. We have to notice the largest ones. Fish, fruit. Generally, I would say that the general picture is, is good, especially considering the difficult circumstances that we are going through. Margin levels in this sector uh, is another topic. And here also considering all the turmoil, it was not too bad. There are categories, especially on the left-hand side, agricultural for uh, companies that operate in food and agri. The, uh, the margin levels were on the rise at some places quite significantly. You have one area which was mentioned earlier, which is uh, seafood and uh, fish processing, where the margin was negative. And some categories, notably beer and drinks, where the margins remained positive and high, but still quite significantly lower than before. Generally, the, the overall picture, considering the circumstances, seems to be good. What one word could be used for this past year, these past uh, 12 plus months? I would probably use um, the words confusion or lack of direction, loss of direction. We had a number of events which for the, our generation, people who are now professionally active, happened for the first time. So we do not have any experience with these. A number of consequences that we saw in the market really results from decisions of single individuals. So we do not really have any tools to model and forecast in any precise way what might happen in the market in the future. So we could be talking about spaces for uh, scenarios, but even scenarios are difficult to come by. What we can be sure of, or can be certain of, is that in 2030 or 2040, we will be talking about it looking back and we'll see if they will want to listen to us and use those experience or they would be laughing at us for re remembering those hard times, the times of storm, the times of upheaval. Thank you very much for your attention.